Over the years on Alamo Jam, it has had a number of mysteries, creepypastas, as well as just noticeable events. And today we're going to be doing a deep dive in the form of an iceberg on Alamo Jam. For those that are wondering what an iceberg exactly is, it is pretty much a chart list ranking everything noticeable about a game, whether it be mysteries, rumors, creepypastas, or just noticeable events on the form of an iceberg. And the deeper it goes, the more absurd obscure these kind of things get. Now I do have to give credit to the reddit user Sunpowered Singularity who made this Animal Jam iceberg over on the iceberg charts reddit page. I will leave their original post in the description below. I should note that I'm going to be going through these down one by one in the iceberg as a typical iceberg video usually would. I do want to clarify however certain parts of this iceberg were taken out due to them being inappropriate or I felt like they weren't relevant enough to keep in but it shouldn't affect the iceberg overall too much however that being said let's dive right into the iceberg Starting us off nicely here, we have Fman122, which was probably the most infamous hacker in all of Alamo Jam history, which he is mainly known for hacking other people through Jamograms and attaching a gift. And if you open that gift, your Alamo Jam account would then be hacked. He also attached the message, thanks for playing with me, and that became infamous around the community, inspiring other people to essentially dress up like him and fake around being like him. Next up here we have Wretched Jungle which was another infamous hacker in Alamo Jam. Similar to Fman122 he was known for hacking other people. However he was known for just straight up hacking other people's accounts. He didn't do it through Jamagram supposedly. He just straight up hacked other people's accounts. Noticeably just influencers and rare people in the community at the time. And he was pretty much only around for two days before actually being banned. And he was never seen again. Third up here we have beta accounts which were accounts registered in the beta testing period of Animal Jam and after this beta testing period ended and some items were made member when memberships were introduced some of these accounts that were wearing previously non-member items that were made member still attached those member items dubbing them as beta accounts so they were essentially non-members wearing member items next up here we have club geos which is an old dance club room removed for really unknown reasons i presume it was just removed due to inactivity in in the room nobody really used it that much and it was replaced by a new room called alpha headquarters and that's where it used to be located and alpha headquarters pretty much is just all to do with lore and adventures on alamo jam next up here a lot of people probably know about this the quackity hq raid this was a raid led on alamo jam by a youtuber and twitch streamer known as quackity hq at the time and he pretty much raided all of alamo jam with yellow penguins asking for duck rights due to to the chat restrictions in the game and the lack of non-member items at the time and this was taking place in around December 2018 and nothing really came of it but it was still a funny event at the time. Next up here we have Breaking the Ice in Mount Chavir and Breaking the Bridge in Coral Canyons. Now this was a large rumor for quite a while due to the animations on the ice and the bridge in Mount Chavir and Coral Canyons. If a large amount of players actually hopped on top of them it would start to display animations of the either ice breaking or the bridge breaking and a lot of people started to make up rumors that you get free membership or rares but ultimately this was never the case as it's impossible to break the ice or the bridge. Next here we have hackers and I assume they're just generalizing hackers as a whole because there is a lot of them in the community nowadays but these are generally people that hack into other people's accounts or use third party programs on Alamo Jam which is against the Alamo Jam terms of service and you will will be banned for doing so. Next here we have Speedo Sands and Sandy Shores which were a mock-up version of the old beta version of Crystal Sands and also the actual beta version of Crystal Sands. Now these were old maps that were actually accessible by a hacker and the hacker pretty much brought a bunch of players to it and ultimately got a whole lot of people banned because of it. After this the rooms were disabled completely however they are still in the files nowadays. Next here we have Cam 
Tammy Carver, which is the daughter of Pat Carver, who is a Wildworks employee, and she actually faced a number of health conditions when she was younger, and Wildworks actually implemented the Tammy Frog item that you see in the game nowadays as a kind of form of support in helping Kami out in her battle with her health issues, but as far as I'm aware, she is all healthy nowadays. Next here we have monthly member gifts, which was removed in 2013 and ultimately replaced by the Diamond Shop, and how this feature actually worked, it would give members that were currently subscribed to the Alamajan membership program a gift every single month, this ranging from items, dens, pets, and even animals. As said prior, it was replaced by the Diamond Shop and the new Diamond Currency at the time. Next here we have Magenta Items, which is the base variant of every single clothing item on Alamo Jam and color ID 0, meaning if you took a color away from an item, let's say just a fox hat or something, the base color of it would be pure magenta. Certain items have actually got into the game in pure magenta format, but we'll get into that in later into the iceberg. Next here we have October 31st, which was the apparent day of a hacking threat launched by Astro Squad at the time, well known in the community for being a hacking group. Although never ended up happening on October 31st, it ended up happening on December 28th of 2020. Next here we have the data breach, which actually occurred in mid-October, I believe, but wasn't actually found out by Alamo Jam until November of last year. Over 40 million records were actually affected in this database. Base breach. Lastly, we have Psychics plushies, which was an old promo for Alamo Jam toys, which was, I believe, the very first plush toys for Alamo Jam, and also came with an in-game code which awarded players virtual versions of the plushies. Moving us down on the iceberg here, we have retconned AJ Lore, or otherwise known as revised AJ Lore. I'm assuming they're referring to Alma Jam Lore being changed over time, and some inconsistencies in the lore as the years went on due to adventures being introduced. Next here we have hacked masterpieces, which are actual PNGs or JPEG files converted from PNG and JPEGs to AJ Art, which is the file extension used to read masterpieces on Animal Jam. This was usually done using a third party program, which I will not disclose the name of. However, these are also called fake masterpieces and they are essentially just images as masterpieces in game. Now the next one here actually includes an appropriate language and I don't swear on this channel so I'll just dub this as SB files but this incident had to do with the community manager accidentally showing the file explorer of a computer while live streaming on the Alamo Jam YouTube channel and it had some quite inappropriate file names to say the least on it. A lot of people were angered about this due to Alamo Jam being a kids game and having such vulgar language be exposed to this on a kids channel. Next here we have have Enchanted Earth, which was a cancelled promo line Alamo Jam was working on following the success of the Sidekicks plushies. It was cancelled due to a apparent falling out with the manufacturing company working on it with them, I believe, and the project was never seen since then. Next here we have ostriches in PC. Now this is referring to ostriches being playable animals in Alamo Jam Classic. These were actually revealed around five years ago at this point, along with falcons and slots, and they were given out as a questionnaire if and what animals the players would want next and slots and falcons were released however ostriches were completely forgotten about. Ostriches however were added to the mobile counterpart of Alamo Jam which is Alamo Jam Play Wild. Next here we have Zero. Now this was a fake creepypasta made up about the user Zero on Alamo Jam and how this really went was there was a black koala plushie as well as a grave tombstone left in their den after they had been banned and people conspired that they had passed away and that the longer you spent in their den the laggier your game would get progressively crashing your game and people pretty much conspired that there was a ghost in zero's den Next we have here is the lines of power being teased since the beta days on Alamo Jam. Now if you don't know what the lines of power are, they're pretty much these ancient blue glowing lines you would see around the game and the first time we saw them was around 2015 in Gorilla's hideout. However, with the power of data mining, it was actually found out that these were in the files of Jamaa Township since the beta days of Alamo Jam. Next here we have Jambassadors faking giveaways. Now I'm assuming this is just referring to Jambassadors holding giveaways 
giveaways and certain times they would be accused of faking giveaways. However, I've spoken to a good majority of Jam Ambassadors and I know that they are pretty credible when it comes to these giveaway things. So I think this is just a rumor around the community that doesn't actually really fall into place. Next up here, we have unreleased items in the game files. Now these are items that are unreleased. They were never released in adventures as gifts or even in stores. Some of these items were never released for apparently no reason and some were removed just because they were too inappropriate. You can check out a full list of unreleased items or at least a majority of them over on the Alamo Jam Classic wiki. Moving us down, once again, we have the WFLA News Report, which was essentially Alamo Jam being broadcasted on national television in America due to a complaint from a parent complaining that Alamo Jam was too inappropriate for their child. This was a pretty big event in the community at the time, and a lot of people found it to be quite funny. Next here we have alphas used to be called shamans. Now this is referring back in 2011 before alphas were actually revealed as alphas. They were usually referred to as shamans in promotional material as well as anything to do with lore around the game. Next here we have in-game timer which acted as a alarm in-game for parents to set a exact time they want their child to spend on Alamo Jam. This was removed around 2012 for unknown reasons. Next here we have test rooms which were typically used by Alamo Jam developers to test new features and upcoming updates to the game. Mainly using this test room here on screen right now which was dubbed as the debug room which listed pretty much every adventure as well as minigame or feature in the game in this one room. It also had portals to other test rooms specifically tailored to specific developers in the game to test out their own features they were working on at the time. Next here we have non-members and member clothing. Now this is different to beta accounts because it's referring to actual items that weren't from the beta such as headdresses. This actually occurred very rarely in around 2011, maybe even earlier, due to a glitch at the time if supposedly you were logged in at the same time your membership expired, you would retain the items on all of your animals if you were non-member and all of the items were member. However, this was later patched but any person that did experience this glitch still can retain the items on their animals nowadays. Next here we have Alamo Jam Jr, which was a cancelled Alamo Jam game worked on for mobile devices it seems, tailored towards younger kids below the 7 to 12 age demographic they have for Alamo Jam. However, this was cancelled for unknown reasons later in around 2015. Next up here we have zebras in concept art. Now this is referring to the concept art for animals in Alamo Jam Classic before they actually worked on Alamo Jam, they came up with concept arts and one of them actually featured zebras or zebras however these were probably replaced later on with horses in game next we have is phantom wastelands which was a fake Alamo jam land made by a fan so it was a fan made edit to do with the lore in Alamo jam however back in 2017 this caught a lot of people off guard and a lot of people did believe it next we have here are aztec and mayan mythological tie-ins on Alamo jam now for those who don't know Aztec and Mayans were essentially ancient empires and tribes and had a lot of mythology to them and a lot of people think they do tie into certain mythology in Alamo Jam and items in Alamo Jam. Now, moving down on the iceberg once again here, we have National Geographic Baby Panda Adoption. What this is referring to is when Alamo Jam hosted an event when they released pet pandas that if 50,000 pet pandas were adopted by players, they would actually adopt a real life baby panda from a zoo alongside with National Geographic's. However, it's unknown if this was ever actually followed up on. I haven't ever seen anything else around this topic 
or if they ever reached the milestone or adopted a baby panda. However, this is what this topic was about. Next here we have Lobo Cavern, which was an unreleased land or room found on a Wildworks employee's art station showing off the full map of the room. It's unknown why this room was never implemented, however it's rumored that it was going to be attached to Mount Shavir. Next we have here our early French server competitions rewarding unreleased prizes. Now these are talking about heart pendants, flower brooches, butterfly earrings, and pro baseball caps, which were rumored to be unreleased promo items before they were released in these early French server competitions. As the name implies, these were only released in competitions in French servers on Alamo Jam and English players didn't actually get to access this. Next up here we have Snoopy considered for early AJ avatars. Now this was way back in 2009 when Wildworks was still known as Smart Bomb Interactive at the time and was working with the Peanuts company to produce games for Snoopy. Through this they actually discovered their love of producing games for animals and animal themed games thus sparking the interest in Animal Jam and at the time the CEO and creator of Animal Jam considered actually making Snoopy a playable avatar in the game. However, they quickly ended up doing concept arts for the Animal Jam avatars we see nowadays, and that is obviously what we ended up with. Next we have here is Shaman Sightings of 2011. Now this is referring to an old screenshot taken by Snowy Claw beside Graham and another jammer that were able to meet Graham in game. However, it was actually a very glitchy model and at the point Snowy actually took this screenshot, Graham had already left the room and it was just essentially stuck on their screen. Which is probably why we didn't see much of these afterwards. Lastly, here we have AJHQ manipulating in-game item worth. Now, I said at the start of the iceberg to do with magenta items, this is kind of tying in with that. A lot of people do kind of theorize that Alma Jam purposely releases magenta items sometimes or has done in the past due to them wanting to build hype around certain items or just straight up manipulate item worth within the game, as well as go as far as release unreleased items to certain players as well, which they have been known to in the past. Moving us down, once again, we have Australia Zoo Partnership. Now, I'm assuming I could be wrong about this, by the way, because I couldn't find much information about this, but I'm assuming it had to do with a promotional card in 2013, I believe, when kangaroos were added to the game, and you could only obtain them by buying gift cards for Alamajan membership in Australia or New Zealand, and I believe there was some type of partnership involved with that. I could be wrong, however. Next, we have here is unused shaman and models coded in game so like we have seen previously with Graham and also with Liza in the old new jammer tutorial people have theorized that there is actual other models similar to these 2011 style models for Graham and Liza for the remaining alphas in game also however these have never been seen by data miners or third-party program users Next up here we have admin rooms. Now I actually kind of referred to these earlier on into the iceberg and that was in test rooms and these were pretty much just the developer rooms that you could see in that map and those rooms are as followed. In the employee corals which were Andrew's room of doom and Laura's lair and there was also rooms for Wayne, Elver and Peter as well. Next we have here, headdresses were not removed over cultural appropriation. Now it is a pretty big rumor that headdresses were removed due to cultural inappropriation, especially against Native Americans due to it being a headdress. However, a lot of people conspired that that isn't the case and they were removed maybe for certain other reasons that we don't actually know. I assume this is mainly because they actually returned head feathers as custom double head feathers as well as promotional items as well as a wild weekend event on Alam Jam Classic. However, we do not know an exact reason for sure. Lastly, we have here is Feral is partially a cover-up. Now, this could be talking about one of two things here. First of all, it could be talking about people getting banned and blaming it on that Alam Jam is apparently trying to move players onto Feral. This was more of a popular rumor back in 2019 when Feral first got its spike in popularity. And second, it could be talking about the spike of popularity in 2019 of 
Pharaoh, as Pharaoh could be or could have been used as a cover up or a replacement straight up for Animal Jam due to its spike in popularity. However, this is not the case due to the dip in popularity Pharaoh did take after its open beta test. Now, moving us on into the final part of the iceberg here, this is probably one of the most controversial topics on the iceberg. Wildworks Glassdoor Reviews. Now, Glassdoor is a website used by companies to actually gather reviews from their previous and current employees. And Wildworks has one of these set up for their employees. And just to say the least, the reviews are not mainly positive on Wildworks' Glassdoor page. I'm not going to be showcasing any of these off here as a kind of way to defame Wildworks. However, it is public information and doesn't really look good on their end. I'm quite neutral on this topic, however, you can leave your opinion in the comments, of course. Next up here, we have pre-beta lore and draft leaks. I think this is referring to just differences in the lore in the beta stages of Alamo Jam, such as the swap out of the Lost Temple of Zio sculpture with the monkey statue that used to remain there, which kind of implies that they probably had something different in mind for Zios, as well as the lines of power remaining in the file since around the beta times of Alamo Jam as well. It's fair to say that they probably did have a bigger thing thing in mind and a much different thing in mind for the lore aspect of Alamo Jam anyway. Next we have here is initial game creators force resignation. Now this is referring to Chris Johnson who originally came up with the idea of Alamo Jam and created it. Now he is still technically partial owner of Wildworks as a company however he has not been a part of it since 2017. To put it bluntly he pretty much didn't like the direction Alamo Jam was going in with how Wildworks was managing it and simply didn't want anything to do with it going forward. And finishing us up here, Wildworks XFBI involvement. This is talking about Wildworks clarifying that they actually have contact with the FBI. And this was first revealed to public players way back in November of 2020 when the database breach initially happened. Alamo Jam clarified that they did have contact with the FBI and they were trying to find out the people responsible for the database breach. However, this wasn't the first instance Wildworks has had contact with the FBI. They have had contact with the FBI prior after handing out cease and desist letters to people that, you know, usually use third party programs or otherwise access files through illegal means belonging to Wildworks. Now, I've only known two people to ever receive one of these cease and desist letters and they haven't handed any of them out since I believe like 2017, 2018. However, the first time I ever heard of Wildworks actually having involvement or contact with the FBI was around the end of 2019 when they were launching their new IP Feral and it isn't something that is shocking to see game companies actually have contact with some sort of FBI agents to take down cyber criminals obviously. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap up the iceberg video here, guys. I had a lot of fun editing this and it was quite the interesting topic and I did want to make this video for quite a while now. So I do hope a lot of you did enjoy it and if you want to see more iceberg videos, you know, mainly, you know, focusing on lore aspects of Animal Jam or creepy pastas, those kind of things. If you guys want to make an iceberg and want me to cover it for potential future videos, let me know in the comments and, you know, I can get started on those, of course. But uh, yeah, that's going to wrap up the video here. Make sure to subscribe with notifications on if you guys do want to be notified on future videos as well as videos just like like this one. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy today's video and let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below. I'm excited to see what you guys think and I will catch you guys in the next one.